Hello, beautiful souls. Welcome back to the Angels and Awakening podcast. I'm your host and author, Julie Jancis. Friends, today we have on another Julie who's going to be sharing three of her beautiful angel stories about relationships, um, how the angels really helped her to work through relationships, uh, has been with her kiddos and uh, her brother coming through from the other side. And friends, uh, she talks a little bit today about songs and lyrics in songs. And just this morning, before I hopped on this podcast episode, I was listening to, um, not listening to, reading. Taylor Swift was Time Magazine's Person of the Year 2023. And friends, if you have girls, uh, boys in your house who love, Love Taylor Swift. I think this is an amazing teaching moment as parents, um, even for ourselves, to just read this magazine article in full because so often. I think society tells us that if we work really hard, we get to this point in life where things are going to become more easy. And as I was reading through this article, um, what just struck me time and time again is how much she had to step up even more so, even more so, even more so. And we really need more resilience within ourselves, within our kiddos. So if you have the opportunity to read that Time Magazine article uh, about her with your kids, she talks about how before she was going to go on the tour, six months before, she started training by running and she would run full speed um, and sing at the same time, run full speed for like the fast songs and sing. And for the slower songs, she would just jog and sing. But there's so much uh, that we just don't see behind the scenes where life doesn't always get easier. Sometimes when we think that we've made it, we have to work that much harder, just in a different way. And it's okay to allow ourselves to evolve in that way. So just a little side note, but here we go. We are diving into the episode with Julie and her angel stories. Quick side note, the angels are saying to say right before we do this, we have an amazing angel fest we are running. It's a three-day free conference all about your angels. So if you want to know more about your angels, working with your angels, how to go beyond just seeing signs and angel numbers to really deciphering their messages, sign up for this. You can go over to theangelmedium.com backslash free. And that's coming up. We're going to give you an entire three-day conference absolutely free so that you can feel more of these um, signs, synchronicities, and messages, and that you know how to work with your angels more. All right, let's dive into the show. Welcome, Julie. Hi, welcome. Thank you for having me. Oh, I'm so glad you're here. So I know that you've got three beautiful angel stories. I'm going to have you take it away and, and share your first one. Okay. Um, so my first one has to do with, you know, receiving a message through a song. So I do, I love music. Um, and I have found that uh, song lyrics really speak to me. And I'm really starting to correlate those with messages for me. So um, back in 2020, after 17 years of marriage, um, even longer being together for 22 years, my um, ex, my, my husband at the time and I were having, you know, decided to get a divorce. And really it was me that decided to file for a divorce, but it was the most difficult decision I have ever made and hopefully will ever have to make in my life. So it was a really, it was a really hard time. And right after the 2020 lockdown in March, you know, things really came to a head um, and I just decided this is the way I have to go. I have to make this decision. And there was a lot of guilt put on me for wanting to do this. So it was really hard. And I was driving to the lawyer's office and I was really still just grappling. Like, is this really, am I really, you know, because again, I there was a lot of guilt being put on me that I was breaking up the family and um, this is what I was used to from him, but, you know, it was still, you know, I really took a lot of contemplating to do this. And I was on the way to the office and the 
I was just begging and praying and just saying, is, you know, am I doing the right thing? Because I was always one of those people that I'm never going to get a divorce because God doesn't like divorces. Right. You know? And so, um, I was sitting at a stoplight and I was like two minutes away from the lawyer's office. And I was just like this, I just need, what do I do? And all of a sudden, um, and a song came on the radio. Um, it's called Burn the Ships uh, by a group called For King and Country. And I was sitting there and I was, it was just like, oh my gosh, this, the sign's for me. The song is for me. Um, the lyrics go, uh, burn the ships, cut the ties, send a flare into the night, say a prayer, turn the tide, dry your tears and wave goodbye. Step into a new day. We can rise up from the dust and walk away. We can dance upon our heartache. So light a match, leave the past, burn the ships, and don't you look back. And um, so I was still, still emotional, like when I read that, like it was a big, it was just like, it was, that was it. That was the sign from God and my angels. And, you know, I drove to that lawyer's office and, and did that. Um, and again, I, I don't take that with a grain of salt. It was a really hard decision, but I knew when I heard that song that I was making the right decision. That is so hard. I think it's so hard because there are so many times where I, what I know, like I know, like I know from interviewing so many people on this podcast and reading so much throughout my life is that there isn't one right or wrong way for anything, for anybody. And we can't just lump everything into these categories and be like, this is the right decision for all people. This is the wrong decision for all people. It's very, very unique to your personal experience as you're going through life. And, um, and you always just have to make that right decision that's right for you. And I'm so proud that you were able to, to come to that. How do you feel now? Because the angels are saying to go into that piece so that people listening, um, I think there's some people listening who are kind of grappling with the same thing. And I wonder how it landed for you. Yeah. So that was three years ago. Um, and it is, I am in, it's so wonderful. You know, I don't, I don't take divorce lightly. I don't, you know, it was five years, five years of me grappling with that decision before I finally made it. And, um, everything was just beautifully orchestrated after that moment. Like I, you know, it was tough. Don't get me wrong. And I have, we have two kids and there were a lot of, there was a lot of heartache, a lot of challenges there. Um, and but we are all in such a better place because of it. Um, just, yeah, it, it, it's hard, but it's definitely was worth it um, for our mental health, for our, you know, our well-being in general. Um, so definitely if it's something that, and I really did it for the kids. I, I mean, to, to tell you the truth, I'm the type of person that, yeah, I could have dealt with it. I could have dealt with this the unhealthy behaviors that were going on and, and that, but I could see how it was affecting our children. And I just, it was just like, no, I can't, I can't stand back and I can't stand for that anymore. You know? Yeah. Well, it's interesting. There's a couple of different things. When my husband and I go into the counselor, the counselor often says, you know, when we do things for other people or when we overlook behaviors and when we let them continue to slide and slide and slide, it's really not doing a service or any good to that other person. And I've been in a situation with my husband way, way, way in the past, and we were able to work through it, but where he was constantly critical of like, 30 times a day, you know, 40 times a day, just making comments where it's like, you don't need to make a comment about that. Like, I don't need comments from the peanut gallery. And I've been in so many sessions where women will say, 
he doesn't want to go to counseling. He flat out refuses to go to counseling. He doesn't want to read any of the books. And the truth, I actually just had a session like this yesterday. And what spirit always comes in and says is at the end of the day, everything evolves. Every single thing here on this planet is part of the laws of how this earth space works. It all evolves. And so if your partner is not willing to evolve together as a couple, they have made the choice in the relationship to end the relationship without saying that, right? Because if you are saying, I'm not willing to do the work, I'm not willing to get help, I'm not willing to change, you are saying that you're you're killing the relationship and um and yet masquerading and manipulating behind the but I want to stay together. No, you can't have your cake and eat it too. Mm -hmm. It's not one um it's you don't get both. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. And I remember, you know, we we tried counseling and he didn't, he went to one and then he didn't want to go back because he didn't like what the counselor had to say. And so I, I ended up going on my own. And I remember her asking me, when is enough enough? Like, when are you going to say, I'm done, I can't do this. And I remember thinking, I don't know. I don't know when enough is enough. You know, so this came in yesterday in the session too, because the angels kept saying to the woman that I was working with, you feel like this is some part of your responsibility. And I think that that's a, a lie that our society feeds us over and over and over again, is that there's always two sides to every story, or there's always two, you know, parts to every decision. And there's really not, you know, like when somebody is in a relationship and somebody's making this decision to not allow the relationship to evolve, to not evolve mm -hmm. themselves. And the other person is working towards that. Hey, let's go to counseling. Hey, let's read these books. Hey, I'm changing in this way. Grow with me. You shouldn't feel any blame is what the angels came in yesterday and, and were saying. You shouldn't feel any blame. You shouldn't feel that responsibility because you're doing everything that you need to be doing on your end. The other person really, truly made the decision for the relationship. Um, so I just think it's fascinating that they're bringing everything yeah. together, <laughs> synchronicity uh, today. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, you know how that works. <laughs> yes, love it, angels. <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah, so um, yeah, everything is everything has worked out great. And there were so many things that happened after that that just worked out unbelievable. Like, you know, finding a place to rent that was larger than I thought for more affordable than I thought, you know, in the kids school boundary, you know, that, you know, because you want to make as less change as possible for them. And it just, you know, it all just has worked out wonderful. Wonderful. I'm so I'm proud of you. That's amazing. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Want to hear your spirit team clearly? With 12 brand new courses, my 2024 Archangel membership will cumulatively teach you how to go beyond seeing signs to deciphering spirits' messages for you and open you to abundance in every area of your life. Become an annual paying Archangel member, and I'm giving you two live bonus courses with me and quarterly group mentorship meetings. Members are invited to live recordings of the podcast with some of our top guests. For tons of new perks and special annual discount, use code ANGEL2024. Space is limited. Enrollment is first come, first served. DM me at Angel Podcast with any questions, and you'll hear back personally from my associate, Yvonne, or I. The Angels want to make 2024 your best year yet. Join today only on my website, theangelmedium.com backslash angel membership. Thank you so much for supporting this show. Okay. 
Okay, Julie, I'm going to have you take it away and share your next story. All right. So the second story I have is actually related to the first day I started reading the Angels and Awakening book. So fast forward a couple of years. Um, I, after a couple years after the divorce, I'm like, who am I, right? Who am I? Um, and I just, okay, kind of try to go back. What did I love? What did I used to love? Like I even went back to being a teenager, right? Like what did I like when I was a teenager? And so, and I started getting into some podcasts and, and really it just kind of catapulted the spiritual awakening journey for me. Um, and I found your podcast, The Angels and Awakening. And so I bought the book. And so one morning, uh, Saturday morning, I was sitting in my room on my bed, reading the book, started reading the book. And I got to like the oneness meditation. And I thought, you know what, like, I'm going to, you know, record this in my phone, just me saying it in a voice memo in my phone. So if I'm out and about and I want to listen to it, I can do it. Um, I noticed outside of my window, I'm sitting in my room right now, outside of my window, I can see the roof of my garage, my attached garage. And I saw a cardinal sitting on the roof. And and I knew about, you know, like the cardinals and the signs, um, you know, that could be signs of loved ones, you know. And I looked at it and I thought, who could who could be sending me a sign? And I I thought about my brother. My brother passed away five years ago. And then I'm like, nah, like that's not my brother's jam. <laughs> like he wouldn't send the cardinal, but you know, but he was the first person that popped in my mind. The cardinal flew away. And what I didn't notice was about two feet away from where the cardinal was standing was a squirrel. And I do associate squirrels with my brother just from some things from our childhood. Um, and I was like, oh, well, maybe my brother is sending signs, you know, maybe this is, um, you know, still kind of questioning it. So I went to record that oneness meditation and I noticed there were some old voice memos in my phone from a, a few years prior. And I was like, uh, you know, like, I wonder what these are. Now, just to take you back like a couple of days, just for some background, my teenage daughter, my older daughter and I kind of had a heart to heart. You know, we, she kind of, she doesn't open up a lot and she doesn't cry a lot, but she started to talk to me about some experiences. She, you know, kind of were stuck in her head um, from when I was married, from her dad in some, you know, just some occurrences, some things that came up that really had bothered her. And she cried, you know, and some, some of his really based on his behaviors, um, and, you know, and I, I, you know, empathize with her to a point, but, you know, I was still questioning, like, was it really that bad for her? And I, and I, and I feel a little shame to even say that I was questioning, but it's like her experience was different than mine. Yes, it wasn't great, but I have to, you know, at the moment I wasn't remembering she was a child, right? You know, like her, the way she took in, you know, what happened is going to be different than me as an adult. Um but I, you know, I comforted her and we talked about it and I, and that, so that was two days prior to this. So I go into my phone and I'm like, you know, I'm going to play these. What are these voice memos? And I played one of them and it was from when she was 12 years old and it was almost the exact situation she was talking about. I actually, rec I didn't remember this, but I recorded on my phone a situation because I wanted to play it for my play it for my my then husband the next day when he was in you know not in the state he was in the evening before um so he could see how his behaviors were um and I just couldn't it was like everything just it was like that knowing I forget which Claire that is like it it just like a light switch went on. Like I suddenly had this understanding of of everything, everything my kids have been through, all the, you know, just the mental health stuff, everything, every struggle they've been through, um, everything just came in. Like it just came in and I just, it was like, I felt it. I a hundred thousand percent felt the empathy and the understanding. And it was just so synchronistic that I would come across that voice memo two days after she and I had this heart to heart about some of, you know, the things that had happened in the past. And 
you know, I just, it's just like, I got it. I got it. And I, um, I just cried. I wept, you know, it's just like, it was almost like a release too, you know, just like about, because I hadn't really processed a lot of stuff either. And, um, yeah, I just had this sudden no. And so I decided, you know, at the moment, like, I'm going to stop everything I'm going to do. I'm going to journal, right? So I wrote down everything that had happened so far and just this understanding. And after I was done journaling, I um, picked up my phone to see what time it was. Um, and my daughter, who had gone to work that morning, had door dashed some food to work. <laughs> and it said, I looked at my phone and it said, Jason is approaching with your order. My brother's name was Jason. And so it like took me like full circle back to like, and I just cried again. And it was just, it was just this whole, just the, you know, the morning was just so special and magical. Like, that's all I can say. Like I was crying and crying, but it was all beautiful, wonderful tears. And I just knew that, you know, I'm like, what magic book am I reading? <laughs> <laughs> that I would suddenly have all these like signs and synchronicities and uh, in this knowing in my every cell of my body that I uh, just fully understanding everything all at once. Oh, that makes me so happy. Um, and that's what this work is about, is just about opening us up to connect with our soul self, our spirit team, our loved ones on the other side, our angels. They're all just guiding us every single day. And they've studied it scientifically. The more that we believe in synchronicities, the more we see them. So yeah. yeah. It's about giving people that hope and the more that we have that hope and that faith and that belief and just the more you see and it's incredible. It was, it was a great day, a great start to the day, you know, and then you just, you just know, like, you know, like you say, you know, that, like, you know, like, you know, yeah. <laughs> that like, this is real, you know, synchronicities, you know, all the signs that you get from, you know, angels and just everything is just beautiful. Amazing. Your brother keeps saying that that has like um, snowballed into like you've seen more and more and more. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I am always just every time I see a time on the clock, you know, how everyone's like, you know, a license plate on the car, all the little things that have happened. Yeah, I definitely don't take one of the, not one single one for granted. So amazing um okay so i'm gonna have you continue on with your next story because i think the ups guy is coming in and i've got a barky dog in the background <laughs> okay <laughs> okay so the other story that i have is it um so when i was when i was married my mother-in-law passed away um a couple a few years before the divorce and um, she had a hospice nurse and she had cancer and, um, there was a hospice nurse that came in and I, she had told us a story about, um, that she had worked with, you know, was caring for uh, a man and his, he had told his wife, you know, when I pass away, you know, the, basically that the signs would be a cardinal, you know, that he would come, you know, come visit her. And she was telling us this story. And so we, you know, it's so really the first time any of us had really ever heard. This was back in, you know, 2013. It was the first time we really ever heard about the whole, you know, cardinals being associated with loved ones. So, you know, it was a, it was a pretty special story. And um, a couple, maybe about a year or two ago, I was sitting at the kitchen table with my boyfriend and my daughter was sitting on the couch next, you know, in the room next to us. And I was telling him about the story. I was telling him about the story of the Cardinals and that after how, right, you know, as she passed, there were all these Cardinals flying around in the backyard. And so it was really special thing for all of her sons to see, you know, and experience. Um, and as I'm telling him the story, you know, we're sitting there and then all of a sudden, I'm, you know, we have the patio door next to the kitchen table. What lands on the step right outside the patio door? A cardinal. Like, I mean, I'm talking right as I'm telling the story, right when I'm done, a cardinal 
comes in and lands on the, the stoop, the patio stoop outside my door and is just standing there. And I was like, look, and my daughter got to see it, which is really special because she was only three when her grandmother passed away. She, she didn't really get to know her. She doesn't really, she doesn't remember her. Um, and so it was a really, really cool experience for, you know, especially for her to see like, this was grandma's sign. And then here I am telling a story and here comes the Cardinal. Um, and, you know, and it was also nice for me too, because you know, after the divorce and all of that and being in a new relationship, it was just kind of felt like it was also an approval in a way from my mother-in-law because I was her only daughter-in-law. She had four boys. None of them were in really in serious relationships or married. It was just me. And so it was kind of like her daughter. Um, and so, you know, you think about those things, you know, after divorcing, you know, like, you know, would she have approved how, you know, but it was, it felt good. It felt like a nice little approval from her. Yes. Oh, I feel that so much. And I feel her intention in that to bring that through to you. That's beautiful. I love that so much. Um, I have to ask you a funny question. When it comes to your brother, when you and he were little, did he like those monster trucks? Not just like cars, mm -hmm. but like I keep seeing, you know, um, that vision of like a dirt arena and like the big, big trucks with the big, big wheels. Yeah, I can't remember if like he had ever gone to see them. He may have, you know, how you can go and actually, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't recall, but oh yeah, he was into anything you could think that was. <laughs> we actually had remote control ones, you know, oh, the really expensive RC card, like monster trucks. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So um, would you have played those then with him? Oh yeah. He convinced me to spend all of my saved money to buy one. <laughs> <laughs> such a tomboy I mean it was my brother and I and he was my older brother so I did whatever he did <laughs> Julie I've never brought through monster trucks before but he just keeps laughing about this memory and um he wants you to know that he's always with the kids going back to your second story and just the tie-in of him watching out over your daughter um he's watching out for the kids he's watching out for you and he also makes me feel like he's so proud of you because he said there was a time in your life where um and I don't mean this in a wrong way like don't shoot the messenger but he's just saying like maybe we weren't mentally strong enough in the past to um stand up for yourself and what you mm -hmm. want and what you need and he said he's so proud of you for just building yourself up and allowing yourself to stand up for who you are and what you need and the life that it is that you really want to be living and um he said my mom used to say this sometimes they pull it out and they hand it over to you he said we went through the harder parts earlier in our life so that the back end of our life could be easier. And he said, don't expect there can, to be continued shoes dropping like one after another. He said, let that go from your mind. And instead, just continue to tell yourself, I went through some things earlier in my life that were harder so that the second, you know, not even second, right? Two thirds of the rest of my <laughs> life can be so much more easier. And, um, and that's what he keeps just coming in wanting you to know. Well, thank you. Yeah. Well, I'm happy to hear that. <laughs> yes. Of course. Um, well, all my love to you. Thank you so much for being on the show. And uh, yes. to everybody listening, if you have angel stories, we would love to have you on. You can submit them over at theangelmedium.com with a contact form or the submit a story button. Friends, let's end today's episode with a prayer. Dear God, as we stand here at the threshold of a new year, we come to you humble in gratitude and hopeful in our hearts. We ask you to bless this world and every person in it with your endless love and abundance. 
We call upon your angels to extend their wings over every soul. May they touch every life, bringing healing where there is pain, strength where there is weakness, and infinite abundance in every area of every life. In this time of global reflection and anticipation, we pray earnestly for peace, peace within our own hearts, peace within our homes, peace across every land. Let hope rise and let love prevail, binding us in our shared humanity and interconnectedness. We ask for special care and protection for the children of our world. May they grow in a nurturing environment, shielded from harm and surrounded by care. Their laughter and their dreams are the seeds of a promising future. And we ask that each are blessed with every opportunity to thrive. God, guide us to be creators of our own harmonious world. Help us to become beacons of your energy and spread your love now and always. As we step into this next chapter of our lives, empower us to live in alignment with our soul. Find joy in each moment and embrace the beauty of life's journey. May we each walk in confidence and faith, knowing that with your divine guidance, anything is possible. May our hearts overflow with gratitude and our minds be filled with positive, loving thoughts. In this spirit of optimism and renewal, we step boldly into our future, ready to create love and thrive. In this we pray, amen. Friends, if you'd like to support this podcast, book a session with me or join my Angel Reiki School, where I'll help you develop all of your unique spiritual gifts and use them to serve. Visit theangelmedium.com or use the link in the show notes to book a discovery call with me personally. Thank you for being here. I love you.